It's disco time! not because I like disco music really in any way, it's because I remembered we had a disco ball in the basement and we're reviewing a beer called Disco Beer by the Evil Twin Brewery from Denmark. Jebe uh, Janit Bjergsjö's brewery, the twin brother of Mikkel Bob the founder of Mikkel Um This beer is a double IPM, 2.5% alcohol and it's a tribute to uh, Jebe's favorite uh, champagne house called uh, Tana, ta, Tanang, I can't pronounce the name, it's whatever, but um, the special thing about it is that it's blended with 10% Chardonnay. Uh, I've never heard of blending beer in wine, so this is going to be interesting. And on the side of the bottle here it says, Disco beer is a vineyard IPA, uh, thoughtfully aged on Chardonnay wine barrels. This rock star of a beer is a real party starter. No more shy beer geek. Drink it and you'll own the dance floor. Produced and bottled by Evil Twin Brewing at Bouverie de Mon. Uh, yeah, just before 2015. Quite interested in trying this. I've never had uh, a blend of wine and beer before. And as you see, the label is quite different uh, compared to the old label of the Evil Twin beers, but that's because they changed the whole design of both the labels and the... Yeah, the label, uh, the logo, I mean, and the beer labels. Um, even changed some of the names. For example, Soft Dookie needs to be named Soft DK in the US. But uh, this should be available in, available in the US soon too. Um, most of his beers are going to be available over there. But let's get it uh, cracked open here. So here it is. Um, now this is a pretty dark <laughs> double IPA. Pretty big, nice head on there. Um, I would call this a very, very dark amber, copperish color, reddish notes in there. I'm guessing maybe that's because of the aging on uh, red wine barrels. I, I'm thinking that's why it's so dark, I'm not completely sure, but um, definitely smell the hops already, it's pretty fresh, so um, nice looking beer, big, three finger, frothy, off white beige head, looks like more like a, an amber ale or a, like a hoppy red ale or something like that, but it is an IPA, so uh, let's take out the aroma of this disco beer. Now that's quite a grapefruity. Quite hoppy. Yeah, it's got that juicy hoppiness to it, but I actually still smell a little bit of malt in here. A sweet maltiness is, is definitely also present in the aroma. And definitely a juicy, grapefruity, citrusy hop. No, maybe... Maybe a touch of like an, an orange, orange zest. Smells like towards a West Coast I, uh, IPA, double IPA, actually. American style West Coast IPA. Smells quite happy, but still not the most happy. I still get like a slight amount of caramel malt in there as well. Um, it's a really, really nice head on there. Look at that. Um, yeah, I don't really smell Chardonnay and white wine qualities at all, really, to be honest, but maybe like a great sensation in there but nothing really but uh, maybe it's in the taste so let's check it out that is quite quite a unique IPA um, it is the mouthfeel is your traditional IPA kind of mouthfeel uh, unless it's medium I'd say it's it's really powdery and dry Exactly like in a dry white wine. Mm. The flavors is definitely quite fruity. I got I get a sort of earthiness in there as well. Uh, I know with a lot of grapefruit. Um, I think the Chardonnay is actually there uh, in the way of the dryness and a white grape kind of note that reminds me a little bit of a Chardonnay, but it's not that. I actually also in the aftertaste get a little bit of like wooden notes. 
because of the aging on um on um Chardonnay barrels. Uh, it's it's quite fruity, but uh, the fruits I'm also getting is kind of like um, not just citrus fruits, but also like a, a, a like a berry kind of grapey note, which I'm guessing is because of the white wine, especially not, not so much berry, maybe more of a grapey a white grape, really, probably because of that the Chardonnay there. Also slightly bready as well. Um, this is unlike any IPA I've had, to be honest. Uh, it's quite unique. I expect the carbonation to be really high, because when I poured it, and gave, it gave such a high, a tall head, I was expecting it to be like the, uh, the, uh, what was it called? Titan IPA I had, which was infected or something. I got a bad bottle of that. From a great divide, but um, not at all. It is still fairly carbonated compared to other um, IPAs, but... Not on over the top and the head. Look at I'm I'm sure this is gonna leave some awesome lacing, but yeah, it's really really tasty, especially because of the blend of the Chardonnay, uh, ten percent Chardonnay in here and the aging on Chardonnay cask. I wouldn't go as far as calling it one of the best IPAs, uh, double IPAs I've had. Uh, still very good, even though it's so unique. And um, so rating wise for me, it is a pretty good IPA. I'm I'm gonna give it an eighty five. Uh, not the best beer I've had from uh, Evil Twin, but still a very interesting interesting example of a, of a double IPA instead of just going with the average either West Coast, East Coast, American style or trying Nelson Savin, then blending it with uh, with white wine, aging it in Chardonnay barrels. So that's quite of a neat little idea. Uh, but pretty solid brew, an 85 for me for the Evil Twin, Twin Brewing Disco Beer. Definitely check it out if you can get it. Um, I know it will be exported to the state, so over there you should, guys should be able to get it as well. So, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to comment, subscribe, let me know what you think of the beer if you had it. And as always, I'm going to say cheers, and I'll see you in another beer review.